Hello and welcome. My name is Johannes. I'm an innovation consultant and author. And today I'm in Barcelona um, at the Keen Folks Powerhouse. And we're here for a certain reason. Um, the Keen Folks have been collaborating with quite some thought leaders worldwide to create an exciting study. And certainly I'm not alone that we have a chat together with you related to that study. So please quickly introduce yourself. Yeah, thank you, Johannes. Uh, I'm CEO and partner of the Keen Folks, and I'm also responsible for the Digital Business Unit. Thank you, Johannes. Uh, I'm Tim Hughes. I'm the CEO and co-founder of DLA Ignite. Thank you, Johannes. I'm Xavi. I'm CEO and partner of the Keen Folks. I'm uh, responsible on the Communication and Experience uh, Business Unit. Thank you very much for inviting us. It has been a pleasure. And um, as we said, um, it has been an intense time for you and uh, collaborating with Tim, myself, and other influencers. And I'd like to give a little um, background in terms of the study because um, in the last couple of years, say three or four years, um, something has become more intense. And that is related to um, all the opportunities that are rising in terms of the tools, how we go, how brands um, are interacting with consumers. Um, it's via different channels, as everyone knows. So it's programmatic, social, customer experience, and so on. Everything has been progressing in the end. Um, and what happens related to that, it also means something for us as humans. It also means something for us in our daily lives. And um, since it has become more intense, it also has to do a little bit with expectations of each individual. And in the end, um, a key question that guided us within the study was, what does it actually mean for companies? Because if the expectations especially are rising, it might be quite difficult in the end also to step back and yeah, make a difference in the end. So um, probably to start with is, um, how do you experience, I'd like to start with you, Tim, as a guest, um, how do you experience that difference exactly most physically that peop, uh, the expectations are changing or on the organization side that they're struggling with that? Um, what we're seeing is that more and more people are moving to consumers are moving to a digital platform. Um, they're consuming um, uh, content uh, on mobile. Um, you know, I, I live in London. Um, I travel on the, the tube and on the railways in London. And when you go on to the railway, everybody has their mobile phone out. Whereas 20 years ago, they had a newspaper out. Um, and what, so what we're finding is that our consumers are actually on social. And what we need to do as brands and as businesses is basically to be on social as well, because that's where our, our clients are. Yeah, I think uh, uh, <clears throat> technology is changing the, the life, the way we live. And I think it uh, goes beyond the uh, digital assets or tools. I think technology is changing the way we interact with the world, changing the way we interact with, uh, with brands or products. But beyond that, it's changing the way we interact with people. I think uh, your example, at the end, uh, you, uh, team, are, uh, you can communicate in one moment, at the same moment, with hundreds of thousands of people yeah. and uh, from your sofa, which is amazing. And this is creating a new references. And this is changing the society because now people has these references. And the younger uh, gen generations, they are thinking, they have this, uh, this, um, this goal, which is uh, becoming relevant and uh, impacting in the, in the society. And this uh, affects in so many levels because at the end, for us as, a, as a, an agency and a, so an agency that is trying to expand our business is, uh, is affecting the way we, in two different ways. I think the, the way we hire people because the younger people want to impact and uh, they want to be, impact to become relevant and they want to do it fast. And I think uh, our, in our case, I think it's uh, our responsibility to guide them in a way that we can establish a common purpose, which is more or less the same when you talk about uh, social media, and at the end is uh, how can we create a meaningful uh, relationship with them? How we can establish a common purpose? I think this is more the, one of the main topics right now. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> uh, definitely. I, I think that uh, all the things that we are saying, it's very difficult for brands to get away. And I think that strategies that uh, brands 
still put in the market are very oriented to this is me, this is what I do, this is my services, this is my product, and they are not really connecting in an experiential way with the consumers. And that is creating a huge gap, and this is what we see. We see uh, everywhere that uh, fast-moving consumer goods, for instance, that have been working in marketing for the last 80 years in the same way, there are difficulties and they are really struggling in understanding that. And uh, by not understanding that, they are losing competitiveness. And this is one of the things that is changing really the world. Because all of a sudden, there is a new company that understands what is the consumer expectations and delivers it. Yes. And by delivering it and by delivering a great experience, they get the market. And this is changing all. Yeah. Um, I think you mentioned comparison also in the end. I think that's a very, very key factor that um, if no matter if it's Amazon or something else, I experience, I push a button and something happens to me, I kind of cross compare the experience that I have with another brand, with another company in the end. So um, that's, that's a big struggle in the end. And it, it also has a little bit to do that, please correct me, but that um, where sits the relationship to people is a key question. That was very much driven by sales and marketing, but in the end, it's a topic for the whole company, right? It is, yeah, I think so. Every, uh, there's, a, there's an old saying that everybody's in sales, but I think that it's, it's more deeper than that, which is that what people want is a relationship not with the brand, but with the people. And your unique selling point are the people within the business. Uh, and what you need to be doing is empowering the people to talk uh, in an authentic way, but also to offer insight. This isn't about providing an advert. You know, here we are. You know, um, uh, here I am, and how great and uh, how great the company is. This is about getting people to actually talk about themselves, uh, because that's important not just for selling, but also for uh, recruitment. Uh, for um, in, in fact, all of the all of the touch points, because because ultimately, what does a business do? A business communicates. It communicates internally and it co communicates externally. And what we need to do is provide channels that allow us to do that in a frictionless way. And social enables us to do that both internally and externally. Yeah, I think for an organisation, you have uh, several ways to start expanding this uh, this uh, statement. Because at the end, <clears throat> before during the last fifty years, we've been trying to be top of mind being a, an, a, an, a, a top of mind in the moment of this magic moment, which is the purchase. And, uh, but now it's not a matter of uh, you communicating to the world, it's more a matter of you communicating to you, you and you and as a brand. As you were mentioning in social media is, uh, you have uh, followers, you need to answer all of them, do an effort to communicate with all of them, to have this direct communication with all the, uh, all the followers that you have. For, for a brand, this is for a personal brand, for, for a brand, it's also important and you need to cover all the different channels in a one-to-one -one communication because at the end we are talking about being meaningful and useful. And that means that we, uh, we have several channels where we can connect in that sense and uh, having this one-to-one uh, -one, uh, straightforward communication. Yeah, absolutely. I think that there is no uh, really a space for brands without purpose. I think brands that are genuine and that are able to connect through values uh, with, with the consumer goes way, way uh, more far than, uh, than brands that don't do it. And I think that one of the things that are really transforming the scene uh, is the way that people realize that. You know? So uh, while I'm thinking about my services or my products as a brand, consumers don't connect with that anymore. They connect with the values that the brand represents. And if there is some, uh, some similarity with my own way of living and my own way of experiencing things, then I buy. And I buy not only once, I buy more. You know? uh, and, and I think that this is really changing the culture and the way that brands start to operate in the market. Yeah. And I, uh, sorry, Hannes. And I think this is important for, as a personal brand, it's easy because you're creating your own and authentic content. The challenge is for the brands because now, as an organization, how can I start, how can I start communicating in that sense with an authentic content that is, uh, is, uh, is meaningful? And this is the challenge that we are facing every day. How we can help brands to become uh, personal and, uh, and authentic? I think a very key point is, um what you said, behavior, yeah? Because 
let, let me take the Amazon as example. I'm getting something delivered by just pushing a button. So I do a behavior and the behavior is happening to me. Yeah? And that's completely different to how especially marketing PR was thinking and acting in the old way like what is just a story that we tell. No, because also a company needs to act. It needs to be in the end. It's about behavior as well for, for the companies, for yes. the employees. Yeah, uh, there's, there's, the, the, what happens is that there's a, a mindset change and there's a habit change. Um, and the difficulty for organizations is that that requires uh, a change program um, because what we're doing is that we're not doing the things that we have done before. Um, to use the phrase, what got, got us here won't get us there. Yeah. Um, and uh, that change is a, um, as uh, you know, change is great, but as long as it happens to somebody else. Um, and um, a lot of organizations struggle with this, with this change. Um, I, in, around here, there's a book on the shelf called uh, Good to Great. And it's a, a book about all of the things that great companies do. Um, all of those companies that are mentioned in that book don't exist anymore. Yeah, <laughs> I think the game changer is the uh, everything things that everything starts externally. Yes. Like an organization, but the, the fact is that everything starts internally. Another example is Tapos. Tapos is a U.S. company which uh, has a clear culture, and uh, yeah. this is the where you start defining the common purpose, and that's why how you can start doing what you say. You know what you mentioned in your book, which is uh, empowering people and empowering uh, employees to start communicating in the social media about their company, and uh, and uh, but this starts creating this own culture and a strong and solid culture that is based on the common purpose. Why are we coming here to the office every day? Why are we doing it? And how can I help to uh, meet this objective, which is uh, yeah. one of the challenges? <clears throat> yeah, before I think that the focus was very related with releasing the power of the brand, releasing the financial power and the budget in order to get there with the, with the message. And then now it's all about releasing the power of the consumers, of the people, of the community. No? When you really engage, this is something else, and this is the magic moment now. It's not, the magic moment is not anymore about one purchase in the supermarket. The magic moment goes in the moment where people start to share their own content and start to have a conversation around the brand or the company with their, uh, with their peers. No? And saying, I had this product and it's great, no? why don't you try it? And this is the best marketing that you can ever have now in, the, in nowadays. You quickly mentioned purpose. Um, I think that's a key word which is used very, very often. But in the end, um, um, also when we think about purpose, as, um, because it's used so often, it, the key question is what does it actually mean for the way you interact with people out there? And related to that is also, for example, social. I mean, you're a big fan of the keen folks are a big fan of your book, which is the reason why we brought you here. But I think also the understanding in terms of especially social is still quite often focused on marketing, PR looking good, while people are lacking for persons to interact with, right? Yeah, I think that um, we, we miss the, the story element. Um, and. Um, Quite often we talk about purpose and we talk about value, but actually nobody knows what those, those things mean. Um, I, we're not allowed to use the word value in my company because a Rolls Royce for some people is value and, and a plastic bag for some people is value. Um, so um, the key thing is to, um, one of the things that we need to do is actually build a story and have a story, uh, not only just for our company, but stories as individuals. Yeah. Um, we're all built up of our own experiences um, and what we have to do is find a way of actually expressing that. And a lot of people say, I've got nothing to say um, and no one wants to hear what I say. But in fact, what you'll find is that people do. Um, and um, what we need to do as leaders is make sure that we're empowering our people to better get, talk in a, a format that is um, on brand, if I can use that term, yeah. um, as in we're not saying things that necessarily are wrong, um, but also we're empowered to say things that we want to say, which may sometimes be uh, different from necessarily what the brand wants us to do, because we need to be authentic. 
that authentic is, I think, a quite key factor because what um, we also experience on a brand level is on the other side that um, that kind of uh, pictures which are very shiny and logos or so on, and so on are being rethought because um, in the end they, they realize probably it's also creating a distance to people and people are lacking for something warm yeah. in the end. Yeah, absolutely. I, I think that the brands that are really uh, getting a stand and uh, putting a word out there now are connecting more and more with social causes. And I think this separates really the, the common brands from the brands that are understanding what is happening out there. So Heinz, P&G, uh, Burger King, they all started campaigns that is looking for that side, for the genuine and for the struggling of the consumers in a specific moment in life. And there are several examples out there around that. So companies are not anymore distant or afraid of touching social causes, no? In moments that, uh, that, uh, that the consumers are experiencing their lives. And this is something that is really changing all. I think that Europe is not there yet, but in the US, you have a lot of that. You are already have seeing a lot of activation of the brands regarding that, regarding the simple things that you are facing. And, um, and this means that, uh, that things are changing. I agree in terms of that direction, and that direction totally makes sense. But it's also, when they do it, people look very wisely. Do they make it real? Do they mean it yes. in the end? Absolutely. So it's, it's I, I think that's the, uh, yeah, uh, we actually, in brands, we're always looking for a brand that we can love. And, um, <clears throat> you know, we will have, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, um, we will have um, certain brands that we will have had passed down to us by our parents, toothpaste, washing powder, things like that. But nowadays, we probably will have changed those. Um, but we actually want to have a relationship. And usually what happens is that brands actually push us away. They push us away because websites push us away. They push us away because they want to throw emails at us and try and sell to us. Uh, we have we have in, in ourselves access to an infinite amount of information. Uh, we can go instantaneously onto our mobile phones on a Saturday in a cafe and decide, should we go to Iceland for the weekend? Yeah, okay, let's see, let's see what the hotels are. And, and we may actually make a no decision, and the no decisions are important. Um, but the fact of the matter is, as buyers, we have that access to do that, and we've never been able to do that before. And that power is so important, and brands have to understand that and realize that sometimes they get to their desks and actually then start doing, even though they're buyers and they sat in, the, in, a, in a cafe at the weekend and worked out that they were going to go to Iceland, they get to their desks and then actually uh, uh, buy advertising, of which is something that they actually don't like in their normal life. And we have to get away from that and brands have to understand that. Well, I think at the end it's changing the, uh, more or less the, the, the approach because at the end <coughs> brands are still trying to sell. Yes. in a commercial mode. And I think is, uh, one of the statements that we have is that uh, is better giving that taken. I think this is one of the statements that the brands should embrace because at the end is uh, only understanding that being helpful for the consumer, you can also introduce the product. I think this is something, at the end we are gonna go talking about the products because uh, the main objective of these brands are selling products and we, don't, we can't forget that. I think we need to sell products, but the way to connect now is, is as you mentioned, is, uh, is more in another, with another approach. But first, we need to help them and be meaningful. And then we can talk about product and we can help them. I think that's more or less the, uh, the, uh, the, the changing of the, uh, of the, uh, yeah, the approach. Uh, nobody gets up in the morning and says, the first thing I want to do today is talk to a manipulative salesperson. <laughs> you know, the great thing about um, uh, the internet is that actually we can go on and buy things in salesperson avoidance mode. Um, and we don't have to talk to salespeople. I mean, the, the brand new electric mini uh, produced by BMW, you buy off the web. Uh, you nominate a dealer, but you don't actually talk to a salesperson. Um, and, you know, that's a big change, certainly in the, in the business to consumer area.